All right, so we're going to talk about critical points for the next two problems. And again, I think the big thing here in red is we're going to find critical points of function, but we have to recall that critical points occur when the derivative of a function is either zero or undefined. And those become very big points of interest for us in what we're doing. All right? Because often they can be max or min. And remember, we also have the rule that if it is a max or min, we know the derivative either doesn't exist there or is zero there. So that's one of the reasons we, but it's not a two-way street. Critical points don't always lead to max or min. This is not true when I'm right on the board. This is not true. But maxes and mins are always critical points. All right? That is true. But we can check critical points. So with that said, if I'm going to do critical points, I have to find the derivative. All right? Now, the derivative on the board could be done one of two ways. It could be done as a product rule. I am not going to do that. I'm going to take some time and use my algebra rules to make this look prettier. So I'm going to write it as a fractional exponent, and then I'm going to distribute it. Because I think using the power rule is going to be much easier for us in the long haul. All right? And once I get to this stage, I have to start, I just find the derivative. Now, there is one of two ways to do this once you find this derivative. You can either just put in your calculator and tell it to find the zeros for you, which will work on eventually. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this into one term and solve it longhand. Because I also not only want the zero, I want where it doesn't exist. And when you see a negative exponent, guys, on a term, you know there's something in the denominator, so you know the domain can have a spot that has a non-existent point. So I'm going to drop this back into 12 over 5 times x to the 2 fifths minus 8x to the 3 fifths over 5. And I look at these two terms and I say, hey, what's the common denominator, Billy Ray? Billy Ray says it's x to the 2 fifths times 5. And so I do this on top and bottom. And you know I took this from the book now because look how pretty this works out. I get 5x to the 2 fifths on the bottom and I get 12 minus 8x. How pretty is that, right? So that is the derivative. And the critical points, again, two cases where the derivative is either zero or where the derivative doesn't exist. So I will take where the derivative doesn't exist first. So the denominator can't be zero. All right? We know that. It doesn't exist there. Well, guess where that happens? x equals 0, right? So I will tell you right now that zero is a critical, when x is 0 is a critical point because the derivative does not exist at 0. Let me say that again. I said that pretty fast. x is a critical, x equals 0 is a critical point because f prime of 0 does not exist. Okay? So that's one of them. The other one is, hey, let's find where the top is equal to 0 the numerator of this derivative. And I think this one, you guys probably can see, I can move 8x over, divide. I get x is equal to 3 halves. That is the other critical point. All right? And so we have found two critical points. We know that f prime of 0 does not exist. We know f prime of 3 halves equals 0. So the critical points this time are 0 and 3 halves. And if I go back to the entire page, it's really just taking a look at taking the derivative, finding where it, where it doesn't exist and where it equals 0. Alright, so now I want to find the critical points of this. What kind of function is this? It's a polynomial, right on. It's a polynomial. 
So I will tell you right now, I'm pretty sure that there is going to the derivative is going to exist everywhere. When I take the derivative of this polynomial, I know by looking at the derivative of the polynomial, and it will be continuous. That makes this problem a little easier than the last one. So try to find the critical point from this one, and I'll do it in one second. All right. So this one's pretty easy. Like I said, polynomial. The derivative's pretty easy. 3x squared plus 6x minus 24. We just use the power rule. And I'll just bring that up. And now, the first thing I see is that 3 is a common factor. Get that out. x squared plus 2x minus 8, and then 3 is that. So the derivative is equal to this. And we know the critical point. This is a continuous function. We know for a fact that the polynomial or trig, in this case, it's polynomial, that f of f this derivative is defined everywhere. It, is, it exists everywhere. This domain is all real. So now we just got to see where f prime of c equals 0. Well, because we factored it so neat and clean, we can tell by observation that c is either negative 4 or 2. And those are your two critical points. They occur at x equals negative 4 and at x equals 2. We know that this function all right, x cubed, we should know from our days of pre-calculus that this looks something probably like this. Does everybody agree? So I can pretty much guarantee you that negative 4 is a local max and 2 is a local min. We'll get to that. We can prove it, okay, and we will prove it by signs eventually. But again, today we're just talking about critical points. All right, let's do one more of this and I'll call that a video. Let's do this. And I'm going to give you the first step. Actually, the problem in the book was the, was the second one. G of x equals x to the third minus x to the negative two thirds. I'm going to tell you right now, in a lot of AP situations, the top function would be what you were given. We should see that the top function and the first step are equivalent. The book problem was actually the second one, so we'll start from there. Give it a shot. Sure. All right. <laughs> Everybody, we've got to take the derivative. We've got to do g prime. I'll do it in green. Use the power rule. The power comes down one third. Reduce it by one. Negative two thirds. Negative two thirds times negative is a positive two thirds. X to the negative five thirds. All right. We're finding the critical point. That's the derivative. We know that we have to find where it doesn't exist and where it's zero. And since we have a negative exponent in the first term, we know that there's some spots where it won't exist, where the bottom will be zero, most likely. I'm going to now do a little algebra time. I see this is 1 over 3 to the x to the 2 thirds plus 2 over 3 x to the 5 thirds. I think my common denominator in this case is 5 thirds. All right? So if I know that, I can just multiply this by x and x, I think. Here I did in purple. And I'll write this as one disaster. g prime of x equals x plus 2 over 3x to the 5 thirds. Critical points happen where the derivative either equals 0 or where it doesn't exist. I will do where it doesn't exist first. And that's pretty straightforward. It doesn't exist when that's 0 on the bottom and that's just at 0. So g prime of zero does not exist. So one of the critical points, CPs, I label them as, is zero. The other one I think we can do by observation. We all agree. Where's the numerator zero? The numerator is zero at g of negative two. And that's going to be zero. So that is our other critical point. So the critical points in this function were 0 and negative 2. And again, and usually it's not calculus guys at this point that gets us. Because I would think the calculus ended right here, if you agree with me. Yeah. This is all algebra 2. Common denominators, right? It takes practice. Just problems, watching problems on the internet, you name it. All right? We'll stop this video. We'll call that good for this.